Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Paul. Welcome. Good morning, Richard. Welcome to the sofa. Yes, we're in a new era. We're in a new epoch. Epoch. The Queen is dead. God save the King. Yeah. So, well, well, well. New day, new dawn, new a epoch. New, new epoch. That's a lovely word, isn't it? Epoch. Mm. Mm. Not to be confused with Ewok, which is very different. Very Much more different. hairy. Very different. Quite short. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, yes. Everybody's getting used to the fact that the Queen has died. Queen Elizabeth II has died. And, of course, it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge and talk a little bit about it. Wouldn't it? Paul? It would. I think we totally, should. Totally. Totally. Have we done though, it now? Yeah, that's it. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we thought we'd bring it up and have a little chat about it because it's on everybody's minds. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a major thing. It's a major passing of the crown. I mean, you know, that is quite a major thing in the UK. Yeah. Well, I think it is a major thing, but we'll come on to our personal feelings about it later. Let's talk about the process because it is a process. Yeah, yeah. They've been doing the sort of funeral planning. Yeah, all right, they... shush now, Paul. Let's take it step, step by step. So the Queen died on the 8th of September 2022. That was a, what day was it? What day Thursday. Was it? Thursday, that's right, yesterday. Because this is Friday. <laughs> Friday comes after Thursday. And Sunday comes after Friday, which is comes after Thursday. Which is how you can see this on a Sunday. There's no time travel involved. I'm talking a lot about time travel Shush at the moment. Now, Paul. So and now on the throne is King Charles the Third. And apparently Is he on the throne yet? Yes, immediately. As oh. the Queen dies, he is immediately king. That is how it works. With immediate effect. So we're in the beginning of a new era. So, of course, it was the Elizabethan era. Now, according to my history, the era of King Charles I was the Caroline or Caroline era, which is Caro Latin for Charles is Carolus or Name. something. Um, and then King Charles II was the Carolian era. So what this era is going to be named, I do not know yet. I'm sure they'll tell me soon. Carolonius. I don't know. Carolonius, maybe. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? We're in a new era, a new epoch. I think it's interesting that he has taken, that chosen name. to take Charles. Yeah, because he can choose his any of the other Rexel names. Rexall name. Because, of course, we're no longer... In the epoch of Regina, we're in the epoch of Rex now, um, because we've gone from Queen to King. So he will be Charles Rex. So where she signed everything, Regina. Elizabeth R. Regina, Paul, not Regina. Regina, yes, it doesn't doesn't rhyme with other Shush things. Now. <laughs> but where it would be, it was yeah, it will be Charles R. Now, won't it? Yeah. Quite easy to remember that, yeah, because just the first bit changes and it's only one letter. So, of yeah. course, when the Queen died, all the process clicks into place. Yeah. So, I think today or tomorrow, I'm not sure which day it is. Friday. There will be the accession um, meetings and it's a group of people that meet to proclaim... Charles as the king. Yeah. So that I think there's two of those take place and then there will be the proclamation. I believe Charles is talking today. Isn't it the Duke of Norwich? Is the Duke of Norwich or something involved? I don't know, Paul. Shush now. 
And then there will be fanfares and gun salutes. So there'll be trumpets and gun salutes um, proclaiming that. And then, of course, in about 10, 11 days' time, there will be the Queen's funeral. Twelve. Uh, I believe her body is being moved from Balmoral down to London to lie in state for, I think, four days. So if you fancy popping around and having a little look at her body in state and having a little selfie. Oh. <laughs> you're um, allowed cameras. Yeah, I'm I sure you're you allowed, allowed selfie cameras. with the Queen. I don't think so. I'm sure they'll have made her up to look nice. Well, yeah. And um, you can do so. Personally, no thanks. No. I don't think so. And then, of course... Once that funeral has occurred, and of course, most lazy Brits are looking forward to hopefully the day off. I know I am. Mm -hmm. Hope it's not on a Thursday or a Friday when I'm already off. I think it's a Tuesday. Oh, please let it be a Tuesday. And um, once that's all over and done with, and we've had 20 billion days of the BBC repeating the same old documentaries, which it will do... We've got the coronation of King Charles III to look forward to. Mm, and when will that be? Well, when the Queen... ...did whatever the word is... ...was coronated. No, when she succeeded. Oh, yeah, succeeded, yeah. Um, it was a year, wasn't it? Over a mm. year before mm. she was crowned, because... I would say that that kind of event takes a little bit of planning. I mean, it's not like arranging a little dinner party, is it? <laughs> not really. No, but why You've does got it... hundreds of people to think about. I know, but in this day and age, you can get all that done pretty swiftly. I think the plans are probably already there, waiting to be rolled out. Mm, mm. And um, But it will take quite a bit of planning, I think. So we'll Do you have, think we'll be asked to, to go along? Yes, I'm sure we will be yeah. invited, Paul. Yes, yeah. undoubtedly being pillars of society and hugely famous all around the world. Because, of course, there'll be two, won't they? Because the Queen Consort will be crowned as well. Yes. So which one are you going to do and which one am I going to do? What do you mean, do? Pop the crown on their head. Oh, I'm not going to do any of that. Oh, no. It's far I'm... too heavy to lift a crown. I'm happy to do that. I do my back in. I think I'll do Shush now, Paul, Camilla. it's not funny. Don't be silly. I'll do Camilla. Don't be silly. Yeah. And actually, I mean, he's taller than her, so you're better doing him because you're taller than me. Shh. Kalaka. That's it. Keep them sealed until Friday. Um, yeah, that'll all take place and it'll be on television and people will be celebrating. In colour. In, in colour. In colour. So the Queen was... The, was the coronation the was filmed in colour. Was it? Mm -hmm. Just oh. wasn't broadcast in colour. Oh, my oh, yes, Because they didn't have colour TV. They didn't have colour. But it was filmed in colour. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got all that to look forward, and of course, hopefully, another holiday. <laughs> and people won't be rushing to Telefusion this time to, to get their TV. to get rent their TV or get their TV, so that five hundred people can sit in a room watching it happen on something that size. Yeah, because we live in modern times. I although, know. Although by then, people might not be able to afford to put their television set on. That's true. They might have to get an yeah. exercise bike so that they to can wire it, it up and pedal. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's it, really. I mean, personal thoughts. Let's sort of think about how we feel about what's happened. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we've obviously only known the Queen... We were born in the 60s, so... Well, you were born in the 60s, Paul. I was born in the 80s. <laughs> only being 39. Uh, 70s. I so, of course, I've the had queen. longer to be presented uh, to the Queen. Shush now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we've always known her. She, you're sort of indoctrinated as a child, aren't you, really? To, you know, follow the royal family and watch them on TV. I, I mean, I always thought the Queen was a little bit of a frump in the 70s and 80s. 
Well, she became a lot more colourful, didn't she, in her latter years? Yeah, and, I, you know, she she just seemed a bit grumpy and frumpy, to be honest. Mm. Um, she never seemed to smile that much. But that was the times, wasn't it? I mean, they were all grumpy, frumpy times, really. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of criticism, uh, you know, of the royal family. There was criticism of Philip uh, because he was very outspoken. And, of course... You know, these people are not the rulers of our land. They are, you know, they're zipped up politically. They're not allowed to comment on stuff. Yeah, I'd like to see that change, personally. I'd like them to say, this is me. And No, it won't, but I would like to see that. I'd like to see King Charles say, this is what I'm saying as the King of England, and this is my personal view. Yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Because I think it's only by that happening that change is going to happen. Otherwise, all these pathetic little prime ministers that we have get on and do whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, you know, we live in a democracy, which means that... We live in a restricted democracy. We don't live in a true democracy. That means that, you know, there are elected members of parliament who represent their constituencies around the country are meant to represent. Yes. You know. Um, And therefore, those members of Parliament vote within Parliament um, for the people who are in power. And of course, the other news is that we now have a new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who managed to meet the Queen to get her permission to form a government... Um, But, of course, she's not... uh, The last Prime Minister and this Prime Minister aren't people that we kind of voted for, so to speak. No, we don't vote for them. We don't vote for them, but we do vote for the government. And this particular government has been in power for how long now? Twelve years. Is it 12 years? 12 years. 12, 13 almost. Very long years. And we won't have a general election until 2025. Unless one is called before. Yes. So Liz Truss, we know quite a bit about from her absolutely terrible speeches. And And the fact that she knows nothing at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't know what kind of leader she's going to be. She... Useless. She has the opportunity, though, she has the opportunity to be the most celebrated leader ever. She has the opportunity to sort out the energy issue in this country. Yeah, but come on, she's not going to do that because she's put Jacob Rees-Mogg in charge of energy, which is a bit like putting Jimmy Savile in charge of a kid's ward at a hospital. So, you know, she's already showing her true colours that she's going to be completely useless Cuckoo. and um, very damaging for, for the environment and anyway, for let's people move back. and just thinking about business. Yeah, shush now. Growth, growth, growth. So how did we feel about the Queen? We've, we've grown up with the Queen. She was in our lives. She used to pop over and visit us. Yeah, pop over for a tea. Hi, Liz. All right, love. Well, she did in Guernsey. Because in Guernsey, she was the Duke of Normandy. Yeah. Because that is the crown dependency um, of which Guernsey, the Bailiwick of Guernsey and Bailiwick of Jersey sit under, that sit under the the ruling title of the Duke of Normandy, which is, was, under the jurisdiction of the Queen of England. It's now the King of England, of course. So, yeah, she used to pop over every now and again and wave, and, and I waved at her once very, very closely. I waved at her once in 1977 when she went oh. on her Jubilee tour and we were in Wales. Yeah, I think and it was She went past tour. in a car and I managed to get a photo of her. That's oh, the... are you going to pop that up here? I don't know where that photo is. It wasn't very good. It was rather blurred. Because <laughs> she it was her moving doing at speed. Waving with her hand in front of her face. But, you know, people weren't wowed by the Queen back in the 70s and the 80s particularly. Weren't they? No, they weren't. It was, of course, when Diana came on the scene that people were really wowed by Diana. Mm. People were fascinated by Diana. Mm. Alexa, please stop. So, you know, 
the Queen, I don't know, I wasn't particularly impressed by her. We didn't really care that much about the Queen, whatever. Um, and I think it's, for me, she's become more sort of real as time has gone on because over time we've had a little bit more access to her. Because of modern technology, you mean? Because of, you know, increased amounts of documentaries, then, of course, the royal family's, you know, social media. We've learned more about them because I think the Queen realised at one point that she could give more in terms of people getting to know more about the real person behind mm. the the title. And I think she, you know, she's been more readily available to do stuff. You know, she did the thing at the Olympics, didn't she? With yeah. With Daniel Craig. She's done a few sort of cameo videos, you know, the one with Paddington. And Which I just adore. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I think over in her later years, she's had a little bit more fun. And actually, you know, you hear stories about her not taking herself too seriously, taking her role seriously mm. um, in public life, but not taking herself too seriously. And actually, it's where people start to annoy me um, on social media. For example, Q Gardens posted a thing about, oh, we're closing the gardens out of respect. And I put a comment, oh, how ridiculous. You know, people may want to use the gardens to reflect and walk around on this day. Mm. And the hate that I got for posting that comment was ridiculous. So I took it down because I didn't want to read any more bullshit, frankly. And I just think to yourself, so get over yourselves, really. The Queen didn't take herself that seriously. Don't take this too seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. I think the RHS got it right, where yeah. the RHS said, our gardens are going to be open, yeah. so you can visit us today, and Friday, and reflect on our patron. Though out of respect, we're closing the gardens on whatever day the funeral yeah. will happen. And I think that's the right thing. I think that's Absolutely. the right thing. I think the I Queen... think times need to change with like Kew Gardens and Royal Palaces, even though we adore them, you know, they're they're so important and and have been so important at times that we found challenging and we've had time yeah. at both, you know, Royal Palaces and Kew Gardens and other places. And they have been a real solace for us. I think Today, Friday, would have been an opportunity for them to say, we respect the Queen, we understand people are going to be feeling, some people, many, some, are going to be feeling that they need something and we're here for you. Not we're shutting our gates and we're closing you out. Out of respect. Out of respect. That's the queen, not respect. The she queen wouldn't would have, have said, wanted that, surely. Carry on. Yeah. Carry yeah. on doing your jobs. That's what the Queen would have wanted. Mm. So, you know, also the other thing that annoys me is people on social media, especially on YouTube, putting videos up just to attract views and mm. using the Queen's death. You know, a bit like us retitling Sunday Chatters, Queen's Death Special. Do you know what I mean? Are we doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, that annoys me. And also people saying things like, and Liz Truss said this, uh, this is totally devastating, sho so shocking. It's not shocking. It's not shocking, it's not devastating. If you were a real fan of the Queen, you would have been following news in the past couple of months, which have shown that the Queen was declining in health. Mm -hmm. And when that happens at 95, 96 years of age... You know something's coming when that happens. And particularly at, at sort really? of midday, one o'clock yesterday, you know, when, when the Queen's physicians said they are concerned for the Queen's health. We knew. I mean, come we on, you know, that's away. the writing on the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Because the Queen is always in good health and get not in good health, but 
being treated and will be, you know, back there. This change of, of vocabulary yeah. was really the message Hello. for the nation and for Prepare the yourselves. Commonwealth that something was going to happen. And if you don't know that, then I'm afraid you're not really a royal fan. No. Really. So stop putting, I'm totally devastated, I'm crying all day. Really, old woman dies of old age. Mm. Really, come on, you know. Look, I'm not trying to take away anybody's feelings of sadness, but... Particularly those of the royal family, take, you know. It yeah. is their, their mother, their grandmother, their great-grandmother. But you know, what I'm saying theirs. is, take a leaf out of the Queen's book. If you really, really were a big fan of the Queen, take a leaf out of her book and look at how she mourned Philip in public. Yeah. She was totally, totally dignified. Really held it together. During Covid, had to sit on her own. Yeah. You know, yeah. take a leaf out of her book. Stop splashing it all over social media as though you knew the Queen. Really? Yes, don't be didn't. a member of the Conservative Party and the PM doing what they want to do. Just think about what she would have done. Yeah, really. So, you know... There is a, a, a subtle sadness in our household. You know, we're sad for the family. Yeah. We're sad for the people that were close to the Queen, the people that served the Queen directly. Mm. They will all be feeling a lot of sadness. There's a, there is a loss there for them, you, and, know, you know, a it, direct loss. It is a, it is a loss for the nation. Um, but, you know, bring on King Charles, mm. frankly. Let's see what Charles has to do as his role as monarch. Uh, so he's back know, in London. So this Friday he's morning, back he's London. back in London yeah. now, recording a, a a piece that will go out this That's evening. Right. So yeah, That's right. by the time you you watch this on a Sunday, because he of will course have this is nation. Sunday Jack. No, it's not his Queen's Death special. <laughs> <laughs> he will have addressed the nation and the Commonwealth. So, yeah, there we are. There we are. So that's our respectful tribute to the Queen, mm. who died yesterday. Age 96. Yes. Thank you very much. Now it's time for Richard and Paul's weather report. Yeah. It's grey and wet. Well, it's been extremely wet. Extremely, extremely wet. Extremely wet. Extremely wet. Yeah. I couldn't even plant my daffodils. <laughs> no, that's not even a euphemism. Paul, no. why do you have to make everything <laughs> into a euphemism? <laughs> Don't be so childish. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, I'm a bit warm now. Are you? Yeah. Have you come over all queenie? Oh, it's my pashmina. <laughs> you and are rather... Very thick cardigan yeah but it has been cool it was cool yeah. this morning but i'm warming up now after that lovely hot cup of coffee yeah yeah so, so yeah weather um, report wet 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 i wanted to plant my daffodils yesterday but couldn't but i did a video anyway of what to do yes i just can't go on um I'll be planting tulips later in the autumn and I'll be doing videos of when I get down and dirty in the soil. There we are. Yeah, you heard it here first. That was somebody at our front door. What? There was just somebody at our front door. That, that really, What's that that really what? threw me. I don't know. I think maybe they put something in the post box, All but right. it just threw me for a Because there was moment. a woman and her child earlier. And the child was running around on our path. And really? she's going, oh, look at the lavender. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Was she? She was Australian. I know who you mean. Do you know her? I know. <laughs> yes. So you've allowed her child to <laughs> run around our front garden before. <laughs> I almost went out there and said, what are you doing? <laughs> but I thought, no, I'll frighten her child. Yeah, you might have done. You might have done. I'd have frightened her if I went, <laughs> At that. I did, but there's, I there's um, one of the um, community gardeners, the, the couple, they they had a son a couple of years ago, so I think two and a half that years ago. Girl. Three years ago. And as I was going to, to feed a neighbour's cat today, um, he was at the front door and he was sort of lo looking out. So he's quite, he's, he's quite tall for his age, actually. 
And I went, morning. And he sort of thought about it and then he went, morning. Morning. And then he just carried on saying morning. That was quite right. cute. Well, it was cute. That was quite cute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yes, wet, wet, wet and windy and stormy as well. We've had quite a few thunderstorms. Little bit of lightning. Small thunderstorms, very localised, very quick. Nothing apocalyptic. There was a rainbow yesterday around the time that the Queen died, there actually. There was, yeah. A big rainbow in the sky, yeah. which was quite fun. Mm. Not the Queen's death, I mean the rainbow. Yeah, the rainbow, yeah. So, weather report, yes, blah, 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 done that, tick, off the list. <laughs> so, Paul, 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 you went on a little course yesterday, didn't you? I did. A little course about... Creative writing, uh -huh. or writing your life, it was called, writing your life. Which, of course, is, is what I do in a Guernsey Garden in London. But yes. I saw this course and it was, it was a, a to you. free course from the University of West London at, the, at Ealing Library, the main central library. And I thought, I saw it maybe six weeks ago and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go and, you know, yeah. And, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I went. I, I think I... Thinking back on it, I think I got more out of it than I thought I was going to get out more. I can't speak. I think I got more out of it than I thought I was going to get out of it before, even after I went, actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad I went. It was, it was quite distracting. There were various exercises that we had to do, which was great. And some of them were other people and they were word games and word association games and that was all fine. But when we actually got down to the sort of the writing bit of it, there were a few other people who were needed help um, or wanted help maybe. Um, and I found that quite distracting and I, it made me realise that when I do write like going to Gardner in London and other things, I need to be generally on my own, but definitely have choir to not have other people talking. Well, yeah. I mean, it was really quite distracting. I think creativity very often comes from a quiet place. Yeah, or, yeah. Certainly does for me. That's why I find, you know, building works, people shouting, you know... It is very distracting. Yeah, totally. That's why writers go and live in the middle of the country somewhere you know to what? go I'm... and write for six months. I was just thinking about that. I mean, Geoffrey Archer had his his. I mean, you know, he's got a had a country has I think has a country home and used to go um, to a shed at the bottom of the garden. I know. Um, yeah. I, I know another person that we we work with. He's he's a. Um, uh, Horowitz, can't remember his name, but he did some of the the um, blah blah blah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I know that he has a place that he goes to write and is away. And I, I, yeah, it was interesting. I'm glad I did the course, and of course, it cost me nothing other than a bus fare there and back, which was really really great. It's made me think about whether I've been thinking about doing some creative writing courses, which actually cost money. But I don't think I'm going to do that now. I think having done that, I I think I just need to write. So, and on that, I found... You just need to write. You don't need to write, do you? You're I want to write. You're imposing those... Yeah, but I'm imposing it on myself and yeah, that's fine. Why not break it down further and say, I'm going to set myself a goal yeah. of writing by this date starting to write by this date yeah and i think it's going because to otherwise be... it would just keep on going and moving and changing set yourself a goal so this morning um i've done some oh. writing so i set oh, myself oh, a goal well done paul um and that will continue but something that also happened this week earlier this week so i was just going through some paperwork 
and I came across some of my writing that I did when I was 11, 13, 17, and I was really quite surprised at it. I started reading it and thinking, you know what, this isn't bad, it's, it needs additional crafting, it needs some more, um, more characters, it needs some more emotion in there. But actually what, what I was doing when I was 11 and 13 and 17, which I sort of gave up completely for decades, yeah, I, I'm going to sort of pick some of those stories up. And there's one particular um, story that I have had in my head since I was 11. And I wrote the first chapter of a book at the age of 13, typed it. Oh. And I have that, and um, yeah. Very good, Paul. Well done. <laughs> I just hope it's not about Pib and Pob, the two creatures that live at the end of the lane. Actually, no. it sort of is what? like that. I was making that up as I went along. Well, there we are. Mm. There we are. Okay, good. So, final segment for today to round off our Queen's Death special um, <laughs> is um, what about what I'm having this way for oh, I don't know, yeah. well we've listened as well haven't we so. well we were listening to the radio listening to Miss Marple Murder at the Vicarage which had June, June Whitfield. Whitfield starring as Miss Marple so we've been enjoying that mm. playing on our little Alexa in the little back room no, I didn't want you. <laughs> I think there was, um, I think there's one more episode that we need to listen to. I think it's just one more. I think we'll treat ourselves to that tonight. But the announcer at one point, I think it was at the beginning of the second episode, and we, re we returned to uh, Murder of the Vicarage with Joan Marple. Joan Marple? Really, BBC? And we both went, what? Joan Marple. Joan? It's Jane Marple. Jane Marple. I mean, you'll find. Mm. God, the standards at the BBC are really, really taking a downturn. And now that the Queen's dead, well, yeah, can't go well, anyway. But this is 1993, wasn't it? It's like, oh, you know, 30 alive. years ago this was done. Anyway, we're also re watching. And is it Paul? Who's... Yeah, move on. Yeah, but... We're re watching <laughs> Jesse Stone. Yes. Starring Tom Selleck. We've recorded the Jesse Stone series or episodes or whatever you call them. They're little specials. Well, they're, they're, they're TV movies. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what they are. That's it's right. a series of Usually TV in two movies. Parts. And we're re-watching them because they're bloody good. Mm, they are. Love the mood, love the music, love the sort of calm pace that they have. Whilst intriguing you and taking you on a little journey and then shocking you. That's what they do, don't they? Yeah, but we, we started watching in production order rather than chronological order by release of books. So if you're going to watch them, start with Night Passage. Yeah. So really good. Recommended if you've never seen them. Really, really good. I know they're old now, but they, they stand up. I think they started making them in 2005. Yeah, Something we've like continued re-watching Schitt's Creek as our yeah. go-to-bed viewing. Love. Uh, we like to go to bed on something light rather than a murder. And uh, that's it for television this week, isn't it, Paul? It is. Yeah, we haven't... That Well, that is it, yeah. That's, that's it. it. That's it for this week. And that's sort of partly because we've been continuing to enjoy the garden room, haven't we? Sitting and relaxing and in a meditative state of mm. an evening. Mm. That's so, right. There we are. So there you go. That's it for this week's... Sunday chat. Queen's Sunday chat! Queen's Death special. Queen's Death and um, we're saying goodbye now. We're going to continue with our day. What are you going to be doing? Well, I'm now? hoping that if that rain keeps off... He's going to be getting his bulbs in. I could get my bulbs in and film a little second part to my bulb planting special. I think a lot of people would be really keen on watching you get your bulbs in. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.